Welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a look at how using guidelines can make drawing a seemingly complex object far simpler. So I have my object here. This is a sample piece that we use in our classes for 3D modeling and drafting practice. And you can see there are many different layers and different shapes in this object. However, they're all basically straightforward as they are straight right angle shapes. So the first thing that I need to do is recreate the rectangular bottom for this piece. And there's a couple ways that I could do that. But in this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my existing object a group by triple clicking and then right clicking and pressing make group and now I'm going to take my line tool and I'm just going to trace the bottom of this existing shape from endpoint to endpoint all the way around and you can see how this turned a different color indicating that it's a different object. Now using my move tool I can grab my current model and slide it off of the rectangle that I just made. And now I know that this rectangle I've just drawn matches exactly the size of my existing piece that I'm going to recreate. So now I need to mark out some of these different layers so that I can use my push-pull tool and extrude them up into three dimensions. So I'm going to grab my tape measure and we'll start with this rectangle here. I need to start by measuring from the bottom edge to the top of this and we can see that it's one inch. Press escape to clear and now I'm going to measure from this edge to this edge and I can see that that is also one inch. So when I return to my model where I'm, or my example where I'm going to recreate, I'm going to start on the right edge and I'm going to pull a guideline over one inch and then I'm going to pull a guideline up, also one inch. And now this area here, marked out in this square, is the same size as this area here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw out that shape. And now before I extrude this to this thickness, I need to know what that measurement is. So I'll grab my tape measure and I'll measure from corner to corner and I can see that that is three-eighths of an inch. So now I'll grab my push-pull and I'll bring this up three-eighths. SketchUp will accept either fractions or decimals. So in this case I will input the decimal for three-eighths. The next part I'm going to draw is going to be this part here. So again I can see that the end over here lines up with the end of this, so I don't need to measure that. But I do need to measure out this line here and this line here. So by placing my tape measure at the corner, I can click and release and then drag up and I can see that this edge is a half an, half an inch. This edge is also a half an inch. And then I'm going to check this one just to be sure also one half inch. So in this portion of my model I need to draw a couple of lines. I'm going to start if I can get my pencil tool to select. There we go. I'm going to draw this line down here and then I'm going to pull a guideline from this edge over a half an inch. Now you can see that I'm still in my pencil tool. I need to grab my tape measure tool in order to pull those guidelines. You can see here how it's just pulling a point instead of pulling a line. So if I push escape and double click the control key, that will reset it and now I'm pulling the line that I want. And this needs to be 0.5. And then I need to pull one down from the top, also 0.5. Now I've got the guidelines I need to trace out this L shape 
and this box. So I'll use my pencil tool and trace out this box. <clears throat> now I can push pull this up to its thickness, but I'm going to have to orbit around my model and see what that dimension is supposed to be. So I'll grab my tape measure and measure from this corner all the way down to the bottom. And I can see that that is 7 eighths of an inch. Now I can grab my push pull and I can pull this up 7 eighths of an inch. If I hover over this part of my model, you can see that the entire thing is covered with the blue dots, indicating that it's selected. So I can go ahead and grab that and start to pull it up. But what you'll notice is it won't let me pull this above the adjacent face. And so what I need to do is I need to pull it to that level and place it. And then I can come back and grab it again to pull it further. But I don't know how far I need to pull it because I haven't measured. So I'll press escape to cancel. Grab my tape measure tool. And I'm going to measure this distance here. And I can see that that is 5 sixteenths. So I'll return to my push-pull tool and pull this up 5 sixteenths of an inch. And now this section of my model exactly matches this section here. Next we're going to turn our focus to this corner piece right here. I can tell that it lines up with the end here. So the measurements I need to take are this edge here and from this top edge down to this edge here. So I'll grab my tape measure tool and I'll measure this edge. You can see that it's one inch and I need to measure from this edge right here up to there. You can see it's one half of an inch. I'll double check this one as well. Also a half an inch. So I'm going to orbit and zoom to get to where I'd like to be. And I'm going to pull a guideline out a half an inch here. This guideline will set this boundary line right here. Then from here down to here is one inch. I already have that guideline from a previous measurement. It's this one right here. And I need to pull one one inch over from this edge. So I'll return here and pull this guideline out one inch. Again, now I've got the lines that I need, the guidelines I need in place, so I can trace out this shape. And you can see how easy it is using the line tool to follow these guidelines from corner to corner. Now I can extrude this up using my push pull tool. And again, it won't let me go above the adjacent face. So I've got to stop there. Then I have to stop here. And now I need to know the distance between this layer and this layer. So I'll grab my tape measure tool. I can see that that's one eighth of an inch. Now I'll return to my, pu my push pull and bring this up one eighth of an inch or 0.125. The next part I'm going to pull up is this section here. I've already got part of it right here. That's this part. So what I need is this leg of this shape. So I need to measure this distance here. Grabbing my tape measure tool and clicking in the correct spot. I can see that's a half an inch. So now I'll come to this baseline and I'll click and bring a guideline up a half an inch. At this point, I've used a half an inch enough that you can see SketchUp is automatically snapping to that dimension. If you use the same dimension more than once, SketchUp will learn that you use that and it will start to snap to that dimension. Now I'll grab my line tool and I'll trace out this L shape. 
Again, push-pull will only let me bring it up as far as an adjacent layer. So I have to bring it to this one. And then I don't want to bring it all the way up to here. This layer is lower. So I've got to escape out and take my measurement. And I need to know this distance right here. Three-eighths of an inch. Now I can grab my push-pull and I can bring this layer up three-eighths of an inch. This part down here is sunk much lower than everything else. And this can be a little bit tricky. So the first thing I need to do is I need to trace out the line to separate out this center rectangle. So I can do that quickly with my line tool. Because of my view, you can see SketchUp can't decide if I should go to the intersection or the midpoint. So I might need to use my orbit and change my view to get my line in exactly the right spot. Now, I need to know the distance between this point here and this lower layer, so I know how far to pull this up. So I'm going to use my tape measure tool, and I'm going to measure down this line, and I can see that it's a half an inch. To make this easier, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull a guideline down from this edge a half an inch, and then when I pull this up, I'm going to match it to this guideline that I've just pulled. So I'll grab my push-pull, I'll select this face, and now I'll bring my tool over, and you can see that it snaps to that guideline that I just chose. When I place, I can double-check my measurement and see that that is, in fact, a half an inch, just like my other model. The last adjustment I need to make is pulling this section here up. And I'm going to go ahead and measure right now the distance from this layer to this layer. And I can see that that is, again, 3 eighths of an inch. And so through a couple of steps, because again, I'm limited by adjacent layers, it's letting me come up to this one, so I'll place it. Whoop. There we go. Now I'll place it to this layer, and now I need to come up an additional 3 eighths of an inch. You may have noticed that it only raised up a 16th of an inch on my last pull. So I'm going to match it back to this face using the inference, and then I'm going to click and re-pull this up 3 eighths of an inch. Lastly, I need to pull up this little top right here. And the line that I'm going to draw that off of is already in place right here. So I don't have any measuring to do. I can simply draw my line on the red axis across and check my measurement for the height on this piece. One quarter inch. I'll grab my push pull and bring this up 0.25. And now I've got an exact replica of this original piece. The only difference is I have some lines here that need to be cleaned up just to make it look pretty. So I'm going to go through and erase some of these extra lines that are the result of pushing and pulling these as separate pieces. Come around to the back. I've got a few lines here. Looking down inside, there's one right there. There's another one. And now our model is clean, and you can see that it looks exactly like the other model. Big difference here, the bottom is open. So I'm going to grab my line tool, and I'm going to just redraw one of these edges to close in the bottom of my model. Last thing I need to do is clear out my guidelines. The easiest way I've found to do this is to grab my eraser tool and click up here at the horizon. 
and it will get rid of all of those guidelines in a single click. Obviously there are other ways to duplicate this. I could have used the control key to just make a copy, but this clearly demonstrates how using the measuring tool to take measurements and then using the measuring tool again to pull guidelines can allow you to quickly and accurately rec recreate even complex shapes.